Hello, folks, and welcome back. Bear Clans Hiking Sedona podcast. Episode 27 today is more trail talk. But what we're going to do, folks, is kind of go into a very open discussion about the best time of the year to visit Sedona. A lot of people ask us this all the time. They're here and they're doing a tour. They're riding the segways. They're hiking. We're seeing them in town at the restaurants, grocery stores. And they just keep asking us, what's the best time of the year to come here? It's like, okay, well, you chose to be here now, so it's pretty much a good time to be here. Now, I can make this a real short podcast. I mean, I seriously could. Any time is the best time to visit. Sedona is ridiculous 365 days of the year and 366 on leap year. So absolutely, it's wonderful to show up every time. But what I'm going to do for you today, folks, is I'm going to define a little bit about our seasons in Sedona. So I'm going to give you a review of the seasons and certain things to look for during each time of the year. And everything depends on the individual. So bear with me, pun fully intended. All right, folks, we'll start with winter. Historically, Sedona doesn't get much snow because we're considered a desert. However, we're a high desert. And that just simply means that our elevation is higher than most deserts that you would have in Arizona. We're averaging somewhere around 4,000 to 4,200 feet of elevation just in town. And we're considerably higher than the average Arizona deserts as the Mojave Desert reaches somewhere around 2,000 feet and Death Valley is somewhere around 250 feet above sea level. So you can see we're considerably higher than those on average, almost double what Mojave is. So how does that actually work with snow? Well, when we get snow, it'll either be a dusting at the summits of all the mountains and that'll be somewhere around 6,000 feet of elevation or above or we tend to get a dumping of several inches of snow at any time. The snowflakes are those type that are like ginormous and they make white out. And they usually fall when we're somewhere around 30, 35 degrees. But again, we don't usually get snow. So check this out. If you imagine Sedona's red rocks and the evergreen trees that we have, the junipers and pines and such, and imagine those covered with several inches of white snow. It is insanely incredible for photography. Now, during our typical winter season, our temps are going to average something, well, something like this. The day temps should be somewhere around 55 degrees on average. Night temps somewhere between 35 to 45. However, the last two years, 2018 and 2019, our winters have been colder than normal and we've had more snow than normal. Guys, February 2019, last year's February, not this past one, but the year before, it gave us around 20 to 25 inches of snow in one month. For us, that's insanity. So yes, winter is stellar for pictures. Springtime in Sedona is insane. Flowers are blooming, our cacti, fruit trees, grasses, wildflowers, everything is just exploding through our spring. And springtime here is slightly different than the northern United States as it tends to start a little early and last a little longer. Somewhere around like late February, early March, we already start getting our spring weather. And it runs generally into May. But again, that's kind of sort of average. But of course, as we all know, Mother Nature changes our averages and throws it in our face. Depending on the snowfall or the rain in the wintertime, our flowers and foliage, those things are going to start blooming differently. So it isn't really standard anymore. But you can count on one thing during our springtime, spring break. This lasts generally from the end of February to the middle of April. Yes, that means crowds larger than average. Yes, that means parking is harder. Yes, that means trails are crowded. And yes, that means traffic is harder and waits are longer. But the views and colors are off the charts. Now, summertime brings massive growth to the plants and pretty much all life. It also means hotter temps. I originally grew up in Vermont and living in Sedona, the temps are way more palatable. That's right, in this high desert, our temps don't feel that hot. It can reach triple digits, rarely, but it can, but that tends to be for very short periods of time, kind of like days, not weeks. Our temperatures get hottest during probably June to August, with averages being somewhere in the low to mid 90s, But remember, it is a dry heat. And I didn't fully understand what that really meant until I visited the first time. Now that I live here, it simply means I can hike all year long. Another fantastic aspect of our summer is something we call 
monsoon season. For me, Vermont had mud season. That meant after the snow melted, nothing but mud was all over the place. Sedona has what's called monsoon season. So in the middle of summer, we tend to get these monsoon rainstorms. And here's what it's going to typically look like. You wake up each day with sunny skies and lovely temperatures. Somewhere around 11 o'clock or so in the morning, the dark skies start filling in the area. Now, it won't cover all of Sedona, but maybe it will. It might cover just one little tiny area. I call it the Charlie Brown rain cloud kind of thing. With those rain clouds, the winds pick up. Rain starts pouring down, and it's kind of like the size of grapes. They're just ginormous rains. The temps drop about 15 degrees, and it hammers us for several hours at a time. The dry creeks that we have get filled quickly and flow hard. There are signs in, our, in some of our little creek beds that say, do not enter when flooded, and they are serious. We can't tell you how many times people get stuck in these little pockets, these little dips that we have. So then, usually around 6 p.m. or so during the summertime, things tend to taper off and the skies start to break open. They'll explode with the sunbeams shooting everywhere. The winds back down a little bit. The temperatures increase again. Our vistas and views are plastered with gorgeous waterfalls, firelight cloud formations all over the place with lightning and thunder, and the red rocks break out into this insane color palette of fire. And the next morning, it brings almost the exact same situation over and over again. But again, that is typical. Now, the summer of 2019, just last summer, we had only about four or five days of serious rain during the summer, but we made up for it in October for some reason and then during the winter time. So what nature provides us, we just take and love. Now for the fall season, we have flowers and plants blooming in Sedona about all year round, so we don't really lose our amazing colors. It's just different because big flowers bloom generally in the spring and summer, Fall provides us with amazing smaller wildflowers blooming and some of the traditional harvests. Apples, prickly pear cacti fruit, choya, yucca, and all the awesome natural fruit tend to be ready for harvest in the fall. We do have a fall foliage that very much reminds me a lot of Vermont. However, here in Sedona, we have only one water supply that produces basically about 95% of our foliage. It's called Oak Creek. Okay. During the foliage time, Oak Creek looks like a snake of insane colors. It's got sycamores, cottonwoods, and oak trees dominating the views, and is just spectacular. Homeowners tend to provide the remaining 5% with things like maple trees, whether it's red maples or Japanese maples. So we do get some really dynamite reds and dark reds and yellows and fiery looking leaves on some of the deciduous trees. The temperatures tend to drop to a more popular level, somewhere between like 65 to 80, maybe 70 to 80. But we put no guarantees on that. As last year, 2019, we had a cold spell, which I mentioned before, and it followed by a hot spell. So, you know, it's just like everywhere else around this country or even around the planet. So that's essentially the five seasons of Sedona, as I, of course, included monsoon season. Pictures are absolutely available 365 days a year. People will find beauty in everything. So who am I to say when the best time of year is to come to Sedona to take pictures? Ultimately, guys, it's about what you believe is beauty. All you have to do is take a look at any pictures that somebody has produced or posted about Sedona, and you're going to find it's gorgeous all year long. Some folks really love snow. Others like to have clear blue skies. And some people really dig the rain. And honestly, folks, I'm one of those people that dig the rain. The pictures that I take out of the rainfalls and the, the small waterfalls and the creeks being filled and, and just the incredible thunderstorms, lightning storms, and the colors that come off of it are just spectacular during the rain. We have all of this in Sedona, and it shows them off beyond words. Each season boasts its wonders and events. We have holidays and Christmas events. Cinco de Mayo, Dia de los Muertes, also known as Day of the Dead. We have mountain bike festivals, international film festivals, yoga festivals. It's just loaded. We have things happening just about all year long. So truthfully, folks, the best time of the year to come to Sedona, whenever you want. Just bring your camera. All right, folks, that's all I've got to say about that topic. Excellent. Thank you very much for listening in. 
God bless you all, and I hope to see you on the rocks sometime in Sedona. Thank you again for listening in today, folks. Your time and energy is greatly appreciated. Please feel free to download these episodes, favorite them, share them, and even visit my YouTube channel, Yavacoco Productions, for all the podcast playlists and for some insanely cool videos of my hiking adventures that I do in Sedona. That all helps me to continue to bring you more exciting podcasts and videos, both for healing, spirituality, as well as just kind of amazing videos of Sedona, Arizona. For those of you wanting to dig in a little deeper, maybe you're struggling with some inner issues or you're in a recovery path from an addiction or just looking for inspirational discussions about healing, check out all of my podcasts on your favorite podcast players. Titles like Path to Recovery Podcast, Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God Podcast, Bear Clans Hiking Sedona Podcast, and yes, I even have one called Star Wars The Bear Awakens Podcast. We are here to help you, and what we're trying to do is offer you things that can help you for free. Plus, there's entertainment involved with a lot of these anyway. So thank you again, folks. God bless you, and I hope to see you on the rock.